right, listen to this now. There are mysterious polygons beneath the surface of Mars. They have ground penetrating radar with this little unit they have up there. And the researchers announced re new results from the scan landing site at the Utopia Plantia, saying they identified irregular polygonal wedges located at a depth of about 35 meters all along the robot's journey. The objects measure from centimeters to tens of meters across. The scientists believe the buried polygons resulted from freeze-thaw cycles on Mars billions of years ago, but they could also be volcanic from cooling lava flows. Well, they could also be something else. Let's take a look at them and see if we can see what we think. All right, now, here's what their guess is, how these polygons formed. They claim that at some time in the ancient, ancient past, there was just sort of a muddy surface and soil, I mean, snowfall and so forth fell on here because it was cold. This is what they, this is all guesses all right and then that snowfall turned into watery stuff and made cracks and created ice wedges all right and they was just all patterned out this exact same way like this here and they just all broke apart all right and and to a certain depth which is not deep a certain depth they just broke apart and then below whatever this is below there was its substrate. That's what they're saying. This is like a layer of dirt that just cracked up naturally. And below it was a more dense substrate. Okay, so are you with me so far? From here to cracking up because of ice to ending up looking like this as it all eroded away basically. Soil filled these depositions and then it just filled up but they still had all of this way down deep and I, i'm sure there's areas where it, it comes up to the surface whether they found them or not i don't know but they can see ground penetrating radar they can see exactly what it looks like and this is exactly what it looks like and these are the depths of these ridges and this is what it looks like now covered up all right and there's um and they're saying subsequently after this erosion all happened this all this what they guessed happened subsequently it was buried by deposition of the covering materials in the amazonian this is all completely you know thought up and i can show you these patterns exist on earth and i know exactly what they are Okay, get ready. Remember we saw this pattern was deep down, well, 100 feet or so down. And uh, this, this shows that it's down here and it's all buried, this pattern now down here. Now, let's see if we can see something like that here on Earth. Now, this is from my friend Tyson Carlson. It's Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. Now this is the kind of pattern they're seeing, these hexagonal patterns from way up above coming down in the ground, a hundred feet down or so, they're seeing these patterns. And they're basically the whole distance that they were going. Now, these are the patterns they're seeing, they're basically identical to that. And they go run a very, very long distance. You see that pattern is running right here. That's that pattern right here, you see it? Now what is this? These are balls. These are balls under here. These are interstitium balls and guess what this pattern here there's another one right up here just above it this is the one membrane layer and then at the top right up here is where that rover is going coming down this is because it's eroding from the edge of the ocean and Tyson goes out and Tyson and Scott Wiles were out here together looking this over. Scott, fabulous guy, a lot of research, he moved on. Tyson's really done a lot out here and he's looking into all of these things because it's right here, it's exposed. And, um, and, and look at how long this thing runs. I mean, this goes forever. And that is that membrane. There's a top layer and a bottom layer. And in between is the 
by lipid. I mean, it's a lipid layer. So don't forget, I'm saying this is the top where the rover is. It's coming down, seeing this layer. Now, I don't think they can see that layer. But let's look at the, these layers close. Here is that layer. All right. Now, what I want you to look at is all the pattern and then these holes. What are these holes? And they, nobody can come out and made these. These were originally here. These holes are patterned into this. And then this little squirrely thing here with the black stuff in it or the gray looking stuff coming out. Let's see if we can figure out this because this is biological. I'm going to tell you right now, no question whatsoever. You see that? This is a bilipid membrane. And it's two layers, phospho layers, with lipid, which is fatty stuff in between, and then some of these little squirrely things and these channels that are, they allow things in and out, and I don't know what all these other things do, but there's cholesterol in here, these little squirrely things and so forth. But this is the same thing. You see that little thing right there? I believe that's this thing right here. You see it? These are obviously these. And they're all over the place to let things in and out of the membranes. Now there's two layers. There's one at the bottom, one at the top. This is the bottom one. The top one is up on that wall. All right, remember I showed you the wall here? There's the bottom layer here. There's the top layer up there. There's a, it's like six feet or, or eight feet above me, ten feet. I don't know, whatever it is above there. And then you have to go all the way up here to the top of wherever the skin was or whatever that tissue was above the membrane. These creatures were literally the earth. And this is what they call the interstitium. And there's a whole set of balls in here, thousands of them, that, that lock this tissue in so it can rock around in your body and it comes back to where these balls are anchored. And here's what they look like. They have straps on them. You see this? And again, this is Tyson. There's these balls. You see the straps coming out of them? In your flesh, you have the ball and a little strap coming, and then you can pull this way, and the strap will stretch, but it'll come back to where the ball was. So in other words, your flesh will go, but this is stuck where it's supposed to be. And that gives you the ability to move around and then return to where you're supposed to be. And I'm telling you, this is just stunningly large. Here it is again. There's Scott. This is Tyson. He's pointing out the features here. You see the thickness of these membranes? That's the thickness of the one at the top and the thickness of the bottom. In between is the fatty layer. Now, this seems to be a little flatter here than it does down the other end. You see how Scott's over here? And on the other end, it looked to me like it got pretty wide. Uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. Hard to tell. But it's, I, I believe this is basically the, the same thing that they're seeing up on Mars. And there's nothing eroded it, so they're just up on the top of everything. All right, Tyson is in a great spot, but it's not unusual. They're everywhere. This is Hunstanton Beach or Hunstanton Cliffs in the United Kingdom. And here's all these balls that have eroded out of this wall. And that's the skin that covered that, and that's the flesh. Right there, and the membrane is going to be in there somewhere. These are the Moki marbles, and they're basically the same thing as this, and they have eroded and you know, and just covered everything. These little balls, and they're everywhere. You see, this is in the real, true body of a creature. This is what these little balls are, and they're just absolutely microscopic. You see this? That's this bullet here. So these are these balls, and so and. This is what they look like in, well, you know, this is an artist rendition, but they, 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 they lock in the balls and then the straps can flex and then there's these little springy brown things that open the, the bags back up and they fill with fluids and that keeps you plumped up in your skin. And then, of course, once you erode it away, it just turns into mud. This is just red fleshy stuff. That's all it is. And it turns into mud clay and clay and mud is just eroded flesh and these balls were the balls in the walls and these are the balls on the ground so it's uh totally different than what we have been thinking because geology really literally is biology i haven't found anything that isn't biology I, i'm telling you right now this this um, it's just a fact
look at what you see in her. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this for today. Uh, there's no reason to go any further here. But remember, I am showing you that the Earth is literally a corpse. And guess who else said that? Jesus said, whoever has come to understand the world has found only a corpse. <laughs> That's what the world is. It is only, Literally, it's a corpse covered with dead bodies. That's it. And this is from the Nag Hammadi. These are the, the Gnostic texts, which means knowledge. And they were hidden because they, were, they would be killed if they came out with these. So they were just found, 1945, in a, a bunch of jars in a cave somewhere over in the Middle East. And uh, they're the secret sayings which the living Jesus, when he was alive, spoke and Didymus Thomas, Judas Thomas, wrote down. That was his scribe. He said, whoever finds interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Well, I'm going to tell you, they, these sayings are not easy to understand. Jesus said, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished, and he will rule over the all. Well, let's take it this in little pieces. Let him who seeks. So, if you're not a seeker, well, you're never going to find anything. So, you got to seek, though, but you got to continue to seek until you find. So, don't just say, oh, I'm looking, and then you just drop it. When he finds, and you will eventually, you will become troubled. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't become troubled, there's something wrong with your trouble sensor. Uh, you will become troubled. And you will be troubled by the people around you. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished. And if you're not astonished by the things that I'm showing you, you got no astonishment in you. And he will rule over the all. Now, I don't know what that means, but it could mean that when you understand so much about this reality, when you go into the next reality, they're going to put you in charge of something. <laughs> I have no idea. But I'm telling you, you read all this, it'll blow your mind. Recognize what is in your sight. And that which is hidden from you will become plain to you. There's nothing hidden which will not become manifest. And it goes on and on and on and on. I mean, this is just, it's, and I'm telling you right now, it's hard to understand. But I'm, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Jesus is sent by the big God that was betrayed by the lesser gods and they took over and they destroyed everybody's mind and they destroyed the earth basically with nothing but war since day one and finally he says hey you know that's a mess and they tried to destroy everything and it didn't completely clean it up and it just got bad again so finally he said jesus go down there and you know this is going to cost you your life they're going to torture you you're going to do all this stuff but Tell them what they're going to get be in for if they don't straighten out. And that is your mission. And, and Jesus came down and he said, look, look, this is real. This is I'm not kidding you. This is all real stuff. And everybody just laughed. The ones that, the, the, the fake Pharisees. And they said there will be false prophets. Those are the fake Pharisees. And they were just doing whatever they had to do to stay in power. Exactly the same as today. And the exact words in, I forget what the the, the, the T the t passages in the t Bible, but it says there were false prophets in the those days, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will concoct stories to make merchandise of you. In other words, they use you and just make you repeat those stories, and their destruction does not sleep. So if people are not honest and true, the next life is not going to be good. And if you haven't been honest and true, I, it appears to me you can be forgiven, but you better beg. I'm telling you right now, and I'm begging, man, because I did a lot of stuff I am not proud of. And um, and I, I'm just hoping, because I, I think all this stuff is true now. I think it's all true. I can't see, I cannot deny any of it anymore. And I think it all starts with a myth which was interpreted as the biblical text and and then they distorted it here and there all kinds of different ways but the one i'm looking at is apollodorus 
Apollodorus wrote the things that Hesiod talked about. And Hesiod was here when Zeus was here. And Hesiod was here writing the story of all of the ancient gods and how Hercules and Poseidon and Hera and Zeus and all of the Titans and the gods and Typhon and all of that stuff is in that Apollodorus. And uh, it rings true to me. And it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. And to believe any of it, you'd have to be insane. However, when I found Typhon in the desert, and I could match it up to the text of, of Apollodorus 1.6.3, it was an identical same creature, and he's just huge, absolutely enormous. They said his head often brushed the stars. I mean, this thing was just absolutely enormous. So, we have, you know, and nobody could ever accept any of this except that now we have Google Earth, we can look down, we can see this stuff. The mud fossils has opened up all new doorways, which I just, the things I just showed you, Typhon, Tyson is finding up there. And I'm going to tell you something right now. What they should do at the University of Oregon is to take care of Tyson, fund him, send some field people out here to see what he's presenting and then take it from there maybe he's crazy maybe we're all crazy but i don't think so this is not this is just, all these balls are in the interstitium the membrane is above there's the patterns are there i know the chemistry will work out too there's nothing here that's hidden it's just dismissed it's just denied All right, so I guess I'm going to leave it again at that. So um, hopefully they will get a hold of Tyson and, um, and say, look, we, we'd like to investigate this. We're scientists at the University of Oregon. We're scientists. Because I haven't found any other ones around that are really that interested in looking at what's firstly undeniable. So anyway, the... The Chinese, maybe they'll be interested. <laughs> I don't know. But I showed you, that's the substrate, and then it does this stuff, and for some reason sublimates and, and, and turns all puffy and all that, and then it gets all buried for some other reason nobody knows about, and it's a consistent 35 meters or so down below, and you run into that pattern. And they went over a mile long, and it's the same thing over and over, just like they would see at a Tyson's. Same thing, right? I'm just driving up over the top. A mile later, it's still the same thing. All right, I love you all. It's time to pay attention to the reality of our world. And don't forget, this is Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. He's got some really good stuff up there. And he's he's got a, a site that's hard to match. And he's out there working. And again, he's not a guy that's just got a ton of money rolling off his back. He's got bills to pay like anybody else and um, he was telling me one time we were talking he says yeah this is killing me he says I, got, I spent all this money but got a microscope he got the drone he got all kinds of stuff and he spent like $30 to get out just for the gas to go back and forth to, to inspect these sites and he, he's done a lot of it and he's really shown that the things that they're talking about is the geological uplift and this and that and crustal displacement and things. He can show right here and demonstrate that that's not true. That's just not right. This is biological. So I'm going to leave it at that. All right. Thank you, Tyson, my good friend, Scott. I talked to him the other day. He's doing fine. He's always on moving around. And um, like I say, this is just... That's stunning. Look at this. That's just stunning. That's the thickness of a membrane. In us, you could see through that. If you held that up like this, you'd see through it. All I can say is, is the ancient stories are ringing very, very true.